Hey to you. I want to welcome you to another episode of How I Animate in Clip Studio Paint. Okay, today we're going to be talking about something that we skimmed over in the last video, and that's parallaxing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and let's get straight into it. Okay, when it comes to parallaxing, we're basically talking about motion tweens, right? So if you already understand how motion tweens work, this is going to be a little bit more easier for you to understand. But if you don't, please just look at the video that I already created about motion tweens. If you go through my tutorials, I did a couple of videos where I did motion tweens inside of them. So those should help you explain motion tweening to you. When it comes to this parallaxing effect, like this one right here, there's a couple of things that go into it. Okay, so the first thing you're probably thinking is, how fast should I move this background? But I want you to take it a little bit further. I want you to think how many layers should I have in my background? So let's go over here to a much more full look of what this scene looks like. So I'm gonna come over here to the background and this is just the basics. So we have a few layers here. We got the sky, we have the lighter mountains, we have the darker mountains, which are supposed to be closer. We also have the clouds. And then the last thing that we have is the bushes up front. He's not actually moving. Everything else is moving, and that's the great thing about parallaxing. But to have that full parallax effect, each layer should move at a different speed. Now, the key is to have the furthest layer away move slower. The further away it is away, the slower it moves. So if I were, if you, if I'm just showing you the mountains, you see how the back mountains are moving just a little bit slower and they're starting to move behind the foreground mountains or the mountains that's closer. Doing that gives it that dynamic of feeling like, oh, I'm starting to see behind the mountains or behind the image. And then when you add another layer like this, like the clouds, it also gives it another feel like you're starting to see behind the mountains on the side of the mountain. Now, I could have put some clouds in behind the uh, closer mountains, but this is just a simplistic look. The other, th this is the basic, right? It's just background, nothing up front moving. And this, this can actually do you some good. This can give a good effect. But if you wanna take it to that next step, that next level, you add a foreground, right? And now that the foreground is the closest thing, that's the fastest thing that's gonna be moving. So I'll hit play and you can see it's moving much faster than everything else. So it's giving that effect as if it's, uh, he's moving fast. It's just the background is further away. Let me show it on this one. So you cannot tell that um, he's actually not moving at all. But the foreground's moving so fast, it makes him look like he's moving faster than he really is. If you're adding a foreground, let's just say it gives it a better, better, just a better amount of dynamics to your shot. Now, the final part is adding the camera. Once you add the camera, you take your shot to the next level. So let's show it with the camera. And what I did was actually with this camera, let me, um, bring the opacity down so you can see this camera a little bit. And I'll play this and you can see, I just moved the camera forward just a little bit and then moved it back. Moved it forward and moved it back. And it just gives it that feel of motion, like you're going somewhere. And that camera moving with the foreground moving and the background moving, it just adds so much to it. And I think that the idea of just moving this background and that making your scene feel dynamic and it feels like it moves is oversimplifying what you really should be doing or could be doing with your shot when it comes to a parallaxing shot. So motion tween, if you need to understand it, please go to one of my other tutorials for motion tweening. But when it comes to parallaxing, you need to think of it as multiple layers doing multiple things at different speeds. But the key is, or the base rule is, the further the object is, the slower it's moving. I think that's enough for this video. And if you learned something from it, please share it with a friend. 
And as always, anime life forever.